Hey, what's up guys? It's Texmo talking to you here. And as I promised in my last video, today I'm going to talk about my M1 Max MacBook Pro 16 inch and the need for you to have a studio display for this computer. Yes, should you buy the studio display to accompany your M1 Max 16 inch MacBook Pro or should you simply settle for a combo like the iPad Pro or simply the 16 inch display on this computer, which privately it's the best display I've ever used on a computer and far better than the studio display. So what should you do? Should you buy a studio display for $1,500 $1, and like use the hell out of that 27 inch panel and forget about the 16 inch that is your MacBook Pro unless you are outside being portable or at home while at work? Should you simply use the 16 inch display and settle for a smaller size display and what offers this display is just insanely good mini led promotion display so what compromises should you take promotion 120 hertz mini led or size in this video i will explain you all the differences between the studio display and the macbook pro's display also all the quirks and features that come with the studio display that is not just a display but almost a computer in itself and so yes in this video it's going to be jam-packed with information and i hope you're excited because if you are, don't forget to drop a like down below and subscribe to my channel. I would really, really appreciate it if you do. But no further ado, let's just get started. As you know, the M1 Max MacBook Pro 16 inch, this one right here, has a 16 inch display. Yes, a 16 inch display seems big. If you look at the side of these two iPads and the, the MacBook Pro, you can see that that's one at 12.9 inch display, that's a 16 inch display. I mean, they don't look that different, while well, the 27 inch studio display is much, much bigger. Actually, it's very, very big. It's a 16 by 9 display, while the MacBook Pro's display is a 16 by 10. So, you have to take that into consideration when watching content. You will have black bars here, the content that is 16 by 9, and on the studio display, it will be perfectly fitted. Although, 16 by 9 is way more common than 16 by 10. I do love the 16 by 10 aspect ratio just because it gives me a little bit more information on the top of the menu bar just without wasting any screen time. And for example, when you are using some apps on the studio display or even the IMAX display, the older IMAX display, you would have to use your menu bar and it would cut in in your content just because your content is 16 by 9 and your display is 16 by 9. So you don't have that extra space up top that you can drop your menu bar while well, this MacBook Pro has that space. And so get rid of the notch. If you go, if you see the line, it goes to the notch. And then after that, it's just content. It's always like that. On the top, you have the menu bar, which gets eaten when you are watching movies or videos, if you put it on full screen. But if you want to access something, it doesn't cut in on all of your content, which is pretty, pretty damn cool. Also, when you are working on Final Cut Pro, Logic Pro, and you put it on full screen, you simply get that menu bar upstairs again which is way more useful to access menus and stuff so yes in terms of watching content and streaming media maybe the 16 by 9 is better but for everything else i do believe the 16 by 10 aspect ratio of the macbook pro is the best and so yes in terms of aspect ratio i do think the macbook pro has the best aspect ratio of course the studio display has a way bigger screen so you can fit way much more content up there you can fit a video can fit spreadsheets way more stuff and so that's one of the main points of this video do you need a bigger display than the 16 inch because you feel cramped on the 16 inch display that's the one thing you ought to think if you do then i don't advise you get a bad monitor just because you won't be compelled to use it just because this display is just incredible amazingly good promotion mini led just makes every other display look bad and if you don't go for a very good display at least externally good looking then you will won't be able to com be compelled to use it like i had the ultra the ultra shot for 350 dollars i think i did a video on that explaining why i sent it back because i did not use it, it was a very amazing display it had hdr it was very bright the contrast was incredible it was 4k but it wasn't that great when compared to this display it was good but it wasn't as good as this one and so i do advise you to get a very good display that can be on par at least that in resolution on quality of display not in i don't know maybe refresh rate is impossible but if you can get a 5k studio display that would be perfect of course if you can go for the pro display xdr even better because you would get mini led technology in uh, grasps 
So yes, it's very important for you to determine if you do need the extra space, then maybe going for external monitor on a MacBook Pro is useful. But for me, and in my opinion, I do think that if you have an iPad at home, you do need that extra studio display real estate, then get an iPad, connect sidecar and you are done. You have already a very cool and very 12.9 inch, 13 inch big display to work with on your MacBook Pro because that's an external display, works on, you can put a little bit of content there if you want to work with. So I think it works pretty well this way and it's way more cheap for me than just buying a studio display. The studio display is very expensive, starts at $1,600, but the quirks and features on it, I do believe are worth it for that type of money because you get an amazing center stage camera, which is only available on the iPad lineup right now, not on the MacBook Pro. You have the best speakers on a Mac ever. You have amazing, amazing design. You have tilt adjustability. If you pay for the extra three to $400, you can get that uh, adjustability on the Z axis and on the X or Y axis or on the horizontal and vertical line. So you can adjust up upwards and downwards the height of your display and what's the rotation you want to adjust. So I do believe that pro stand like stand for the studio display, it's worth it. Yes, this is very, very interesting to know that this display does not adjust heightly because it's a laptop. You just have to put this stuff here, which is actually quite useful, makes your laptop higher, but you can adjust it like so. And I mean, it's a laptop. What can you expect? It's a huge screen. It's a 16 inch screen, while the other one is a 27 inch, which is way bigger, 11 inches of differences. I mean, are huge, but the Pro Display XDR is 32. So yes, let's see what happens. But the Studio Display is actually very cool for people that want to have an external monitor at home, want to work at work with the monitor that the, the job or the, the company has, and then just want to buy their own computer, the MacBook Pro, where they work on the company and then they bring it home to work at their external display on their studio. So yes, Studio Display makes sense for some people. But for others, it doesn't. Because if you are like me, you work a lot for out of home, like you go work on coffee shops, university, trains, then buy an external display for someone that is very mobile, that lives in a, in a house one day and in the other house another day, or goes to university dorm during the week and then goes home for doing the weekends. It doesn't make that much sense to, to have a, a monitor in one place and then use the Macro Pro because you end up just liking the Macro Pro screen so much, you get used to working on it and then you reach home and you don't use your external display just because it, it's not as good. No display is good as, as good as mini LED 120 Hertz promotion. So that's one of my biggest gripes and grasps with me, the, the studio display is the fact that it doesn't have promotion display. And the mini LED I can tolerate because I do like those extra blacks and the inky blacks that the OLED technology and even the mini LED technology offers but I just cannot live without promotion. I love promotion. I have promotion on my iPhone, on my iPad, and I do think that the promotion technology on the Macro Pro is a differentiating factor that I cannot live without. It's a deal breaker on the studio display. Although I don't think that we will get a 5K 120Hz Pro Display XDR soon, just because Thunderbolt 4 does not support the speeds or the bandwidth required for that and Apple doesn't want to go lower than 5K resolution on the Pro Display XDR. Doesn't make any sense. They can at least enable the 4K 120 frames per second option on settings, but that won't be very much like Apple. So let's see what happens. If Apple comes out with a display like that, it will surely be more expensive than $1,600, maybe $2,000 to start with or even $2,500 or if Apple wants to and they go crazy, $3,000. I don't believe this 27 inch display, which is mini LED that Ross Young is talking about, will replace the Pro Display XDR just because Apple, the Pro Display XDR is 32 inches and starts at $6,000. So it's their cream and butter of baby. It's their baby, it's the best display that I've ever made. I don't think Apple will top that out with this next mini LED technology display, which will be probably 27 inches, 5K and 60 Hertz. And of course it will be a little bit better, it will have mini LED technology, so it will be Studio Display XDR. So let's see what happens, it will be HDR enabled. But at the end of the day, do you need the Studio Display? No, you don't need the Studio Display. Do you want the Studio Display and you can justify having an external monitor? Then you should go buy it. It's a good deal, in my opinion. The microphones, the center stage camera is incredible. Here's the comparison between the center stage camera on this uh, Studio Display against my camera on the MacBook Pro. Hey guys, <laughs> this is uh, Tag Summer here, and this is vlogger style on the M1 Max MacBook Pro. This is my 
camera test and what you think. This is also the microphone test. Let me know in the comments below how I look. I think I look pretty great My looking at my and testing out. I think that's pretty good. This is a 1080p camera, but it looks pretty great. And for zoom calls, it looks perfect. In my opinion, a little bit more crisp than the center stage camera on the studio display. But let me know in the comments down below how it looks and how it sounds, the microphones. I think that the camera on the Micro Pro is a little bit better, but because it has the normal viewing angle. The other one is a wide angle or the ultra wide angle, so it has to crop in when you are looking normal. But the center stage camera is incredible, can follow you around like a camera. So I do believe this studio display has a ton going for it, the amazing design, the amazing port selection, which has two USB-C ports and one Thunderbolt 4 port. Of course, you can charge your MacBook Pro at 96 watts, which is incredible. It can fast charge your MacBook Pro 14 inch if you want to. And of course, the tilt adjustability, the rotation adjustability, the build quality, which is aluminium, the amazing speakers, all of these go and create an amazing package for only $1,600 or $2,000 if you wanna go for the Pro stand. Yes, I do think that's very cool. Yes, I do think that's, that has a market. Is it for me? No. I do, I think it's for you, it depends. You have to answer to some questions like, do you want an external display? First of all, do you need a more real estate than 16 inches? Try to live with your 16 inch Micro Pro for a while. If you can go with it, just don't buy one. It's a waste of money. Wait, if you cannot live without a bigger screen, without the 16 inch size, then I do think that the studio display is a very good deal. And of course, at the end of the day, what matters is what money and what worth you would you give for an external display for more real estate on this M1 Max Micro Pro. If you ask me, I don't think you need it, but you might have different needs. And so this is a very trick question to answer. Of course, do I think this is a good partner for the M1 Max Micro Pro? Yes, for sure. It's one of the best, not the best looking display on the market right now, not talking about the Pro Display XDR. That's totally out of range and budget, but the Studio display is just insane. It has the microphones built in, it has the, the webcam built in, it has the speakers built in. It has the amazing design. It's very adjustable. You can get a nano, task, a nano texture thing that uh, anti-reflex glare. This display has everything and you cannot expect not to have something on this display. And it's the perfect companion for your Marco Pro if you are looking for one. But like I was telling you before, and I tell you again at the end of this video, I don't think if you have a 16 inch Marco Pro for 90% of people, you need an external display. Just for people that like to work on a very big screen, like to work with huge spreadsheets, like to work with huge cold lines, like to edit videos and they like to have the biggest canvas possible, edit photos. Those are the real professionals that probably need a studio display for the 16 inch Mac Pro. But I can guarantee you, if you give it a try, or at least if you try it out for two weeks, three weeks, you will get used to the 16 inch display, which is for me, in my opinion, big enough and you won't probably settle with a bad refresh rate which is a 60 hertz or a very bad build design and of course resolution so yes try to work with this 16 inch Mac pro in my opinion that's the best screen ever on a computer and so if you can do i don't think the studio display is worth it if you can't work with a 16 inch size display then for sure go for it the studio display is an amazing deal and i'm very grateful that apple finally offers a very good display in this lineup. Of course, this is all speculation because if you don't like the studio display's price or if you don't need the studio display, then it's just not worth it. Of course, if you want a bigger screen, there's a lot of alternatives right, uh, right there. Like on Amazon, you can get $350, $400 ultra sharp displays that are incredible to look at, but the build quality is not that great. If you like the amazing build quality of the studio display, then it's a no brainer. Of course, if you are looking for more than 5K resolution, you only have the Pro Display XDR and that's very expensive. That's three studio displays coupled together. And yeah, that's it. That's all the, the possibilities for you to buy the studio display. I do think it's a very cool display. Do I think it's the end all be all of displays? No, I don't think that's the be end all be all of displays. Although if you have a Mac Studio, that's the perfect companion in my opinion. And if you are looking for a Mac Studio versus MacBook Pro comparison with the M1 Max versus M1 Ultra, then go for my channel, I have a video there. I have actually two videos, but this, the latest one, which was on Tuesday that I launched it, it's the best one. I have the more recent uh, benchmarks and you will love it, watch that video. Of course, if you are interested in all of my content, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to my channel and leave in the comments down below. Are you getting a studio display? Are you not getting a studio display? Do you think it's a good deal? Do you think it's a bad deal? 
Do you agree with me or do you agree with Marquez Browning, which thinks that the Swift display is not a good deal? Let me know in the comments down below. And this was Tech Summer talking to you here. Bye.